He's not even, he doesn't look like he wants to build one. I mean, he should. He's spending a lot on units. He's saving up now for 400, but at the same time, there's a big attack from the Protoss on the right. And it looks like he's just going for it. He knows this expansion is the only thing left in this game. Zealous starting up a lot of good storms. And look at the Templar count. So many Templar storming everything, trying to bust in there, doing so much damage, so many storms. Does he have any psionic storm left? He does. He continues to press forward. This has been an insane trade. And it looks like he has forced the expo to lift. But there are so many tanks at the back that he couldn't keep pushing. And now he has hardly any units left. The Nexus is being constructed and he's coming in for another attack. Uh -oh, These tanks are seized. Oh. And it looks like this Colossus that has been alive almost all game long can continue to abuse the long range and pick off more SCVs. The expansion going down again for Mana. This left base is up. If Mana can win this game, that would put him back on the map. But he's still down 0-2. And the tank production of Nama is absurd. And I don't even know if he's ever going to scout this expansion on the left-hand side. There's no way he can guess this is here. And that could be game-changing. It could be game-ending. And look at these ob observer in the main, and a couple of zealots are coming down a scout down the bottom. If they see the command center missing, that could be huge. Definitely. This one nexus is very close to done. Almost only high templars being made by mana, as he only really has assimilators left. The forge is continuing to upgrade. He knows the value of long-term upgrades. But again, this expansion on the left is so key. I mean, mana is inches away from just sending units over there for free kills. He's so close to doing it, and we are now 29 minutes into this game, and we look at the food count, 95 for Terran and 109 for Protoss. Somehow, Mana is still ahead in food. And in the unit counting station, we see eight Marauders and eight Marines. Those are the core units for Nama. Without those, he cannot really hope to push. So Nama is going to move out with little small forces, but he's going to have to be relatively passive. And oh no, is he going to scout the left Whoa, expansion? He's going to go up there and he will see it. And this is going to be huge. He is going up the ramp and he is going to see it. And there now is the Zealot getting a bunch of free kills with all these static tanks. It is going to be a little bit difficult to be able to defend. There is another High Templar trying to sprint up. It looks like the Marauders are ready for it. But he might just wait and then try to do a push on the left side. There's the lift. And it looks like <gasps> trying to sprint through the tanks aren't siege. He's going to siege up and he does get them sieged up just in time. All these High Templar have so much energy and they're going to be able to do a lot of storms. These SCVs really hate the Zealot, kill the Zealot. No problem for all these SCVs. Another one wants a piece of them. Bring it on. The SCVs get us around. No, they just don't care about that Zealot and it walks straight past. Wow, what a tense game. Neither player has had almost any minerals the entire game. This Templar count is so high mor morphing Archons because they have such high health. I'm, I'm almost going to faint. This game is so tense. It is so tense. Oh my god, there are so many. It's both players edge of their seats, I am sure. I am on the edge of my seat. And it oh looks like, uh-oh, uh-oh, that's a big loss right now for Nama. Having units just getting ripped apart. Oh no, every unit counts at this phase. And it looks like those two zealots will end up escaping. Oh, he's got to be careful not to go too far though to lose a lot of damage. And it looks like in the meantime, Mana is just trying to mass up Mana. Playing so carefully, that High Templar is still there, has gotten four kills with a Storm Drop. The Zealots are continuing to patrol. There are just so few options for Nama. And here's a drop to get rid of the, these Zealots. Got to be careful though, because of it, he has got the stamina, he does stamina, he will take these two Zealots down. Losing this Marauder as well, got to be really careful. Huge Storm doing more damage. Really great harassment with this one High Templar. And it looks like we have so many speed zealots. Look at the zealot count. Oh my god, 28 zealots on the map right now. Mana is mined out of his assimilator. Each player only has one base at the resource counting station. We do see that a lot of the resources for mana are in probes. And he is massing up a giant zealot archon force. And it's all tanks and marauders. And oh my god, this could be the final confrontation. And there are so many zealots. They are going to charge and eat these marauders alive as well as the tanks. He's got to be careful. A perfect scan. And here it comes. This is the final battle. He's sending in all the Zealots. Huge storm trying to pull back, but the Zealot count is so high. He's doing huge damage. Oh! Man is breaking it. Will he win this game? He has been doing it all game long. Nama has no more defenses. He does it. <laughs> what a great game. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my.
And honestly, if that's the way you have to win to beat Nama, man is going to have a long road ahead of him to get to the free <laughs> win mark. There's a long couple of games coming up. What a fantastic game. Every little <laughs> unit counted. Every inch mattered in that game. The hut... I <laughs> oh my god, game. that actually happened, and it wasn't rigged. Those players are actually that good. Mana, I have never seen such patience under pressure. Siege Tanks shooting at his natural expansion, stayed calm, finally breaks it after a 15-minute push at his front door, and then taking the gold, accidentally lets it, lets it fall, no panic, calmly retakes it, and slowly, inch by inch by inch, was able to take that was win. Was long mine, mining from the gold to his natural for so long, lost his nexus about three times altogether, but finally gets it back up, and oh, I can't believe he got through that. The real key at that battle at the end, there was just too many zealots. All the high temple had so many storms they could use and the entire of the force just was obliterated and we are going to get ready to go into the next game and i can't wait to see this it is going to be on metalopolis again metalopolis the big question is will they spawn in horizontal positions that is top versus left or right versus bottom those are the close tense spots or will they do a cross map spawn a long macro game either way mana down one two nama still one game away from victory and it looks like both players are ready so we are getting directly in to game four of the grand final of the DreamHack Steel Series Land 2010. And indeed, if you like Mana, continue with that form from the previous game. Please make some noise. Oops. Terran. And if you would like to see Nama close this series out, three to one, give a cheer for Nama. And it looks like, oh my goodness, much to my heart's delight, the longest term of long-term games may be before us. Nama in the left position as the Red Terran, and all the way across the incredibly large map of Metalopolis is Mouse Sports Mana. Wow, and I hope we are going to see another ent entertaining game like we had just seen. That was so, so high skill by both players, and I cannot believe how Mana stayed calm under that situation. He just stayed so cool, waited for so long, finally broke through, and then was under basically the same situation once again on his gold, stayed perfectly calm, and waited until it was the right time to take out his teammate. I mean, so often when you're against a Terran player, how do you end up winning? You win with some really nice storms. You win because he went mass marine marauder and clustered everything together. You get some sort of lucky free shot off, but no Nama is phenomenal with positioning his tanks, with positioning his marines and marauders to minimize damage from Colossus, to minimize damage from storms, and he is such a, just an absolute beast to be against. And I'm interested to see if Nama will be going for the, uh, for the starport again for the Banshee play. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he does that, because last game it didn't really work out for him too well. And it looks like he is getting a supply depot at the front of his base. Could wall in later if he wanted to. Gateway down for mana, as is the assimilator. And it looks like already mana checked the bottom position, saw that nothing was there, will be heading to the left, and will be quite happy to see that Nama is as far away as possible. And we have the 16 SCV queued once again. Trademark from Nama is just going to go for the extra SCV rather than going for the early command center. I mean, for the early orbital command. And the probe is going to go into the base and see what's going on. And the Marine is only halfway from coming out. So Mana now getting into the main, seeing the orbital command, doing again a little bit of zapping. He just gets so angry whenever he scouts his opponent's base. And now this is very interesting by Nama. He is actually trying to wall himself in, and Mana loses the probe. Now Nama is scouting into Mana's base again. Very fast second assimilator. He does. Will we be seeing the factory go down? It looks like no. We are going to see a tech lab go down before the factory. Uh, Cancel the second marine, actually. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see how that will develop. And in the other side of the base, the SCV is still causing havoc, scouting around. We'll leave. No, actually, <laughs> jukes the probe and comes back into the base. 
Now, one thing that we have said time and again, but has not quite fully explained is why Mana will love these cross positions. As we've seen, Nama is a big tank player, loves sending long, slow, deliberate pushes to his opponent, and with these long distances, it will take a little too long for those tanks to get there. So Nama will have to play outside his comfort zone, perhaps relying on large marine marauder forces, which we have not seen from him yet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. we see a fast expansion here. Change of build order, please. We do see that, this Reaper into expansion. A quite a nice build order, especially with being cross position. Uh, I mean, it's going to be such a long time for your opponent to get towards you. And, well, Nana actually has no idea about this, and he's not going to scout it for quite a while. And meanwhile, it looks like second barracks going down for Nama, not doing any sort of fast factory action. SCV returning back home. Reaper going to pop up to this Zelnaga Watchtower. One unit being devoted to that Zelnaga Watchtower. So absolutely critical. And you know, it looks like Mana is just going to play this off safe, getting the fast robo facility for the Observer. Yeah, it depends how many observers he is going to get out. Previously, previously, we saw him get out two, three, and even a fourth eventually because there were so many. Oh well, he felt threatened by Banshees. Unfortunately, there was only one for him. See how many he does build this game in. And the probe is coming in. Will he be able to see the expansion? There is a Marauder there. It doesn't have any shells upgraded, but he does know the probe is coming. Will he be able to get it, though? And it looks like the probe down to 10 life. It does get taken out. Doesn't even get to do a hit on the Marauder. Perhaps walked up and kissed him in his final dying days. <laughs> There a is kiss a of death, you could say. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it's a kiss, a little mechanical kiss from the probe. Now he's poking up with the Reaper. He might be able to pick off something. No, doesn't get the kill. And wow, look at that nice focus by Mana. We'll be able to take that free Reaper down. Takes down the Reaper, denying any scouting. And outside, we do see the transfer going down to the natural. And Engineering Bay quite soon, actually. It's very out, very fast. It'd be interesting to see if he does go for an early upgrade. Stim is almost finished now. And you know, looking at Mana's composition, he has not really seen much of anything, he's feeling uncomfortable, so he's going for three gateways early on, instead of some sort of expand, looks like he's expanding only after he builds those gateways up, Observer is almost to his opponent's base where he will see the quick expo. And the Nexus has been planted down anyway, it doesn't matter, he will not need to see the expo has been put down, the Observer is moving down, we'll have to be careful as there is a turret here, does not want to be walking into that, and I think the Marines do have vision of it, they do have vision of the Observer, they walk up closely, they could get a snipe, but no, it just goes <laughs> outside of vision. Oh, and there's the stim and the scan, really does not want to be spotted, very nice play by Nama, eliminating that Observer, and now... He will be building, wow, another barracks, and it looks like Mana is convinced that he can do a little bit of hurt back on his opponent. It's interesting, the Marine does see everything, it still has control of the tower and sees the composition, and then he decides to pull back, forcing three bunkers down, just that movement so nice, moving forward, putting a little bit of pressure on your opponent, and then just moving back to your home base. Looks like that Nexus is increasingly close to finishing, there's a Twilight Council going down, wow, very fast Twilight Council. Clearly wanting zealots with leg speed and that very key storm upgrade. There's the mariner at the Zelnaga watchtower. Again, so not fair. Yeah, he killed that probe. Yeah, cheer from the crowd. They're just having any excuse to chill no matter or to cheer <laughs> no matter what. And a little bit different from previous games. Uh, now we're actually going for a more infantry based play. Uh, salvaging the bunkers. I was like, what is that noise? Look over at your screen and it's like bunkers salvage but he's going for such a more heavy infantry style play rather than tank heavy um, obviously this is probably because of the spawning positions as you mentioned it's going to take a long time for all the tanks to go closer and closer to his opponent's base. Uh -huh. Nama has spent some time getting extra add-ons, has two tech labs, is getting the combat shield now, has not yet gotten the concussive shell, going to wait till right before he pushes to do so, not getting supply blocked again, very nice, no upgrades coming out yet, and it looks like Mana is gearing up to take another base, he is going for the very fast Delet with leg speed, and we do see a Templar Archive spawning at the left position. Completely skipping Colossus this game, not even going to bother to go for them, going straight for High Templar, uh, they are so good. We're going to have to see Ghost come out to really combat this correctly. Previously, in the last couple of games, we haven't really seen any Ghost to help combat uh -huh. this. So that is a, a d definitely something he needs to improve on this game. I mean, with that many Psionic Storms last game, it almost didn't matter what Nama's units were. They were all blanketed under that permanent damage field. But now Nama is moving forward to do a little bit of a push, and Mana's going to have to be very, very careful if he wants to be able to defend this properly. And Stalkers are moving out, and if he comes down with a couple of motors, he might be able to get these. He's moving down and the stalkers go up there he might be able to get these a stim oh, is no. on and four stalkers are going to be trapped and he's going to get all these down very nice oh, play by no. nama four free stalkers meanwhile in camp mana he only has 
three remaining gateway suites.